I was 25 years old, I convinced six of my friends to ride their bikes across the state of Florida one weekend. And for the last 25 years, I've been leading rides across the state. Tonight, I want to share with you some of the lessons I've learned riding my bike across the state of Florida. Lessons of love and leadership and life. Although biking 220 miles across the state of Florida from the east coast to the west coast is something that can be done alone, I would not recommend it. So on our bike trips, they're fully supported. I bring along a group of supporters to help us, encourage us to, to do things for us along the way. No one is successful alone. Our biggest accomplishments in life are made possible because of the support of other people. Every champion, every winner, every graduate, every successful business person has a team of people behind them that are cheering them on and making them successful. I've learned that these supporting people are very important. Most leaders know how to uh, lead from the front. That's easy. But a lot of leaders don't know what it means to lead from, the behind, from behind. On the Cross Florida bike ride, I lead from the back. I do that not because I'm the slowest rider or because I'm out of shape. I do it because I want to come up upon all the problems that might come up during the bike ride. A flat tire, a wreck, an accident. And I want to be able to be present and able to lead in those moments. Leading from the back has taught me to be truly a servant leader. In cycling, drafting is an important part of being able to ride because you have to be able to sometimes to rely on other people to get help. A lead rider will pull other riders along by breaking the aerodynamics of the wind, and as you ride in behind them, you're a much more efficient rider. It is impossible to draft alone. In life, many things require the help of others. Leadership is meant to be shared, and so sometimes we get tired. We can go further together than we can by ourselves. Sometimes I lead, sometimes I'm pulled along, sometimes I pull others, but I've learned not to be too proud to ask for help. Some things are not intuitive. Some things don't make sense. Some things are really silly. Cycling clothes kind of fall into that category. <laughs> but no one has intentionally really would go out and wear cycling clothes in public. It's just silly. But I guarantee you, if you've ever ridden a bike without cycling clothes, <laughs> you know intimately what a rash and what chafing is. And soon you become a believer in cycling pants. And even though you might look like a burst tube of biscuits wearing cycling clothes like this man, you quickly learn that you can, learn you can uh, gain experience through wisdom, even if it's not fashionable. Well, we all like to be in control. But last summer, I experienced the loss of control. I lost a good friend to a heart attack, suddenly. I lost my job, I lost my income, I lost my health insurance, and I had two horrible surgeries to get rid of a bad gallbladder. And in the process of going through that loss and losing control, I learned that losing control in, leads me to surrender. And when we surrender, we really learn that we're more successful when we give up control, having to control everything in life. Well, surrendering is not always comfortable. Neither is riding a bike across the state of Florida. And we tend to stay in our comfort zones. But I'm thankful for the people and the experiences of my life that put me out of my comfort zone, that made me go further than I thought I could go and, and stay longer than I thought I could stay and, and keep going, pushing me to do more, even when it was hard to take that challenge, even when I didn't have the answers. Each of, us, uh, each of these uncomfortable moments made me stronger. And learning this lesson has helped me face these uncomfortable moments in life. I'm continuing to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. On the Cross Florida bike trip, there are some factors I can control, but weather is not one of them. You know, in Florida, it can be sunny and bright one minute, and five minutes later, it's pouring down rain. And we never will ride in thunder and lightning, but we will ride in the rain, and we will ride when, it, when it's windy. And it's amazing there's some people in life that when it rains a little bit or it's windy, they give up. It's too hard for them. And how people handle the things they can't control says so much about their character and really defines so much whether they're successful or not. This is a three-day, 220-mile-long ride. It's not a race. It's never been a race. It's an endurance event. And most important things in our life are not things that, that are done quickly. They take time. The winner is not the fastest. It's the one who lasts, the one who finishes what they start. Strength is mostly a physical test, where endurance is mostly a mental test. I've learned how to have greater endurance as I've gotten older. I've learned how to never give up, to keep going, to keep pressing on. Remember, the tortoise can beat the hare if it doesn't give up. All of us have days when we feel like quitting, though, right? It's too hard, it's not worth it. Whatever your excuse, I've learned there is a huge difference between stopping and quitting. I hate when people quit. I hate quitters. Because when you quit, you forfeit everything you've accomplished up to that point, and you have to start all over again. There's a big difference between stopping and quitting. When you stop, you take a break. You call a timeout. 
You catch your breath, you gather your support team, you, you regroup, and you go back out there and you finish what you started. Stopping is smart. Quitting is dumb. I've learned to never quit. I hope at least one of these lessons will inspire you to be a better leader. And I invite you to join me this fall on a bike ride across Florida and experience these lessons together.